I will just say some quick words of introduction. Leona has earned her master's degree in computer science at the Free University of Berlin, Freie Universität Berlin, which is uh, actually where the SUSE Institute Berlin is also located physically. So she's been a cornerstone of the SKIP development team for several years now. And uh, over the last years, she's worked on uh, a new addition to the SKIP optimization suite. Uh, which you will present in this talk. It's a library for parallel pre-solve for integer and linear optimization. Thank you. Yes, so I will be talking about the PILO, the, the acronym for the name. Um, so um, PAPILO provides um, pre-solve and post-solve routines uh, for MILP problems. It's a new addition to the SKIP optimization suite uh, in version 7, and it's also available under LGPL version 3 on GitHub. And uh, it supports uh, different use cases, so it can be used as a header-only library um, or like on the command line um, um, as a front-end for SKIP, Zoplex, um, or HIES, another LP solver. And uh, it also has a support in Skip 7 as a pre-solver plugin. So for using the um, executable, we can like pre-solve a problem to a file and also store post-solve information on the command line. When we solve the reduced problem, for example, with Skip um, and write out the solution, we can subsequently on the command line um, perform the post-solve operation using the archives that was written out before and produce the um, solution in the original space. And also Papilo can call skip directly and um, also write out the solutions. It will then first pre-solve the uh, MILP, uh, subsequently call skip or suplex, and um, finally perform the post-solve operation. And also there is uh, skip seven, the integration with Papilo directly. There's some output uh, when you run skip during pre-solving where it says running MILP pre-solver, which is when skip will be calling Papilo and uh, perform pre-solve on the MILP problem. Uh, pre-solve in general to get everyone on the same page is a very important step for efficient solving of MILPs. And the general goal is to change the problem somehow so that it becomes easier to optimize later. Um, in some cases, this is very obvious, like uh, fixing a variable um, should uh, not hurt because it only decreases the um, amount of freedom that is available. But for example, for substitutions, it could affect the non-zero structure negatively. And um, there are some other things where it's not totally straightforward. But in general, we want to make the problem easier. And um, the thing is that we only have a very limited computational time because usually it uh, does not pay off if we postpone the actual research, the solving process for a too long time. Um, so yeah, we want to be smart here. The reason why we augment SKIP with another package for pre-solving is that skip can solve much uh, general, uh, a more general class of problems um, like MINLPs and um, has a constraint based view on the problem. This means we have constraint handlers, for example, for set partition constraints or for general linear constraints that are stored um, separately and cannot access each other's data uh, without some. Um, workarounds. And um, this makes uh, some pre steps hard to implement. Consider a set partitioning constraint that you can use for substituting one of the variables because a linear constraint implies a bounce on this variable. Um, yeah, this is then hard to find out in the current framework in SKIP. And this matrix-based view of the constraint matrix needs to be built um, regularly which causes some overhead if we still want to implement some of those pre-solving steps. And um, yes, also the problem state in SKIP is um, uh, from the design 
always altered directly within the pre-solvers and this the matrix view becomes outdated, wouldn't to be updated or recomputed. And also it makes uh, exploitation of parallel uh, hardware um, not very easy if you have a lot of shared state. So the integration of Papilo within Skip works um, by having a pre-solver plugin which builds the matrix view and calls the Papilo library. Papilo then performs a full mid pre-solving on the, this matrix, not just one um, step like in other pre-solvers that builds the matrix view currently in Skip. And uh, by this, uh, the overhead becomes negligible because we perform many steps of pre-solving. Um, yes. uh, the substitutions and bound changes that Papillo finds uh, can just be communicated seamlessly back to Skip because Skip supports um, in the core the functionalities for communicating such things. Uh, constraint changes, on the other hand, can be more um, complicated and the, the current state of the integration they are only communicated by deleting all constraints and recreating the constraints from the uh, pre-solved um, matrix from Papillo. And this is by default only done when like some considerable amount of um, rows or non-zeros have been altered. And um, the performance impact for integrating Papillo and Skip was quite considerable, even for the sequential case, um, we have a 6% uh, speed up um, that comes from um, Papillo in Skip 7. Um, and yeah, so there are different reasons. One reason is that the pre solving itself can be much faster on certain problems where pre solving takes a significant time. But um, also, the pre solving in um, sub skip heuristics, for example. Uh, where Papillo is also called, is now stronger because previously expensive pre-solvers were disabled there like probing and uh, Papillo now performs some of those and uh, can speed up subscript heuristics and um, yeah. So to um, enable all these features for Papillo, uh, we needed a careful design and uh, one core feature is the parallel um, algorithms that are contained. And for this, we have a transaction-based design as it is used in database systems. So the pre-solvers actually can only access the problem data structures in a read-only fashion and don't alter them, but instead they return a set of reductions to the core, which then modifies the problem. And um, uh, these reductions are returned in terms of a transaction. We will uh, shortly see what this exactly means. Um, but a transaction basically contains all the information that the core needs to assess whether the um, transaction can still be applied and uh, is still correct for the current problem, which might not be the same that the pre solver inspected because um, after several reductions were returned, there, uh, the problem could already be altered when the core applies all those reductions. And um, yeah, when conflicts between transactions are detected, um, they, um, these transactions are discarded and they need to be detected and resolved in the core. So one example for such a transaction would be the substitution of an implied free variable. In this small example, we see um, that so, so we can see that we have those three variables x, y, z, which are between zero and one. And um, actually we can substitute, for example, the variable x uh, because the bounds are implied. So the lower bound is implied by the first row, x plus y greater or equal to one. And the upper bound is implied by the second row. So we can basically remove the second row and substitute x by um, one minus y minus z. And um, yeah, so what the transaction looks like, it locks the bounds of x, it locks the rows that imply the bounds and that are used for substitutions. And um, then 
the fourth step is to substitute X. So when now the core in Papillo processes this transaction, it will check um, the logs of this transaction, whether they are violated, and uh, substitute um, the variable only when those logs are not violated. For example, if the bounds of X would have been tightened um, to 0 0.51, then um, the lower bound would not be implied anymore. So that's why we also need to lock the bounds. One round or one like set of pre-solving then basically looks like that we obtain a set of those transactions by calling different pre-solvers. And um, those transactions are then applied in some sequential order that um, yeah, it's a deterministic sequential order. It's nothing special. It's just like the order in which the pre-solvers uh, were set up or something like this when might uh, be improved in the future. Um, and um, yeah, then the modifications of the problem are recorded. Like we have a state for rows and columns when we apply the transactions. And finally, when we like before we apply a transaction, we can check it against those states. And um, after all transactions have been applied, we can reset the states. Um, and uh, for some kind of conflicts, we can even like resolve them perfectly. For example, like if we have bound changes coming from different pre-solvers, um, then we can just keep the tightest bounds that we find and um, not basically lose anything. And for some transactions, we might discard them. So for the parallelization, this is, um, comes in very handy because using this transaction-based um, system, we can basically run the pre-solvers in parallel, which is a task parallelism that Papillo exploits. And um, also internally, pre-solvers might exploit a data parallelism um, that, um, yeah, when different um, things for rows or columns are processed, um, we might do so in parallel. Uh, sometimes, so there is some uh, working copy that is required um, per thread. And if we, like, see in this picture, um, in Papillo, we can um, have some tasks and some thread, this could be a pre-solving step that is processed in one thread. And in another pre-solver, we have another data parallel task that is uh, processed by two other threads. And only um, two copies of possible local data are created. So the thread that does not join in the data parallel task will not create um, copies, working copies of this data. We will see like examples on some pre-solvers so we come back to this uh, basic scheme that we use in Papillo. Um, we implement this using the Intel TBB library. It has a non-preemptive task scheduler and facilitates um, different features to um, easily implement data parallelism and task parallelism, like parallel for loops and things like this. And uh, the, there's an object called TBB combinable where you can lazily create first thread data. Uh, let's, yeah, like a copy of some arrays that you want to create only once per thread and not once for every um, entry in the data parallel task. And um, it uh, also supports recursive nesting very efficiently. Uh, basically, we call multiple pre-solvers in parallel and the pre-solvers themselves can uh, start more parallel tasks and um, there are heuristics in Intel TBB that decide during the runtime uh, based on the load, whether there are available threads that are idle, uh, if a data parallel task should be split up further. So one um, instance of a parallel pre-solver is a probing pre-solver. Probing is a kind of important uh, pre-solve step for many MILC problems when they have binary variables. Uh, the idea is simply to like see what happens if we fix a binary variable either to zero or to one, and um, then inspect uh, like the consequences from propagating um, bound changes further, as to the constraints. And um, 
Yeah, there are some possible reductions that we can find. For example, the first case is if one branch is infeasible, then we can fix the binary variable to the other branch. Um, if there is another um, variable that um, is um, fixed as a consequence of fixing the variable x, then uh, here in this example it's y, then we can substitute y by um, choosing the relation it has to x. And uh, finally, we can uh, we might find bound changes for some variables and uh, the weakest of those bound changes of both branches um, is uh, globally valid. In uh, this branch down here, we have like an, we found a propagation of variable z uh, smaller equal four and smaller equal five. So globally, z cannot be larger than five because the binary variable um, will attain one of those values. The um, parallel implementation of probing um, works very well because it um, does not need to copy so many things. So we need copies of the upper and lower bound vectors, obviously, and we need a copy of the row activity vector for efficient uh, constraint propagation. And um, we can reuse those copies um, sparsely when we go to the uh, efficiently by resetting the um, sparsely the altered entries when we go from one probing candidate to the next one. Um, so with the TBB combinable, we lazily create only those copies that we need for those threads that participate in parallel probing. And um, then they probe a batch of those variables and reduce those data arrays. Um, the probing always performs a probing on a batch of variables and then evaluates whether working limits have been reached or whether it is worthwhile to continue based on success. And um, finally, the reductions are merged and sorted deterministically. And um, by this, we can have a very nice um, scaling with a number of threads. So there's an instance EX10 in the 2017, which is basically solved by probing. And um, look at the um, red line. This would be an ideal linear speed up. The actual speed up that we attain is a blue line, which might look bad on the first glance, um, especially for the higher number of threads. But of course, the code cannot uh, be parallel in every part. So if we have just 5% of the code that is sequential, then an ideal linear speed up curve for the remaining 95% would be the brown curve. And we can see that there is some per thread overhead, but it's very small. So this comes from setting up the data structures. Um, and um, up to 16 threads, we almost have a perfect linear scaling for the parallel part. Yeah, so this is very nice. And there are other pre-solvers that can profit from parallelization. So for the dominated column pre-solver, um, which um, like finds situations where we know that we can always prefer one variable over another, both in terms of feasibility and in terms of the objective value. And one of the variables is not bounded the preferred one, then we know we can always rather increase the value of that variable instead of the other one and fix uh, that one to its bound. Um, so for refining this efficiently, their dominated column space over uses some kind of hashing mechanism um, that computes hashing signatures where we basically have a bit set um, or hash into a bit set when a variable is contained in a column or not. And based on the signatures, we can have some premature filtering for the um, comparison. And for the parallel implementation, we have a first step where we scan all columns, and we compute the signatures, and also we um, find which columns are unbounded and could be a dominating column. In the second step, we then scan those unbounded columns again and um, check the actual domination of other columns. And um, both states are just data parallel and 
require no special local data. And in this case also we sort the reductions deterministically and um, always produce the same results regardless of the thread number. <coughs> um, so another parallel preserver is a constraint spoilification. Um, the basic idea is we can add equations to other rows and the problem always remains valid and um, this possibly reduces the um, number of non-zeros. So in this example when we have this equation row in the top um, then we only look at situations where the support of the other row contains all but one um, variables. So if we count uh, those occurrences of the columns that are in the equation row um, for the other rows, then we see that um, the maximum count value that we can have is the length of the equation row. And row one uh, reaches this length because the overlap the, all the columns in the equation row are also contained in row one. For row two, we reach the value three, so length of equation row minus one, which would also be a candidate that we would look at. The reason is that we can uh, cancel at least one variable. So if we have a complete subset, we know that we can specify without like looking at the scaling factors and see, um, so we know this beforehand. And for the second case where we have like one additional variable that produces fill-in, we know that we at least um, cannot end up with a denser problem because we can also uh, guarantee to cancel one variable. And if we're lucky, we might be able to cancel another variable. So those are the cases that Papillo looks at and it uses a parallel implementation to find those um, with uh, and find all those opportunities. So uh, there's no working limit required. And um, this again works similar to what we do for the probing pre-solver. So first we create or retrieve the counting arrays that we only need once per thread. And again, we use a trick that we can reset the counters uh, sparsely when um, we know which ones for a non-zero, which will usually only be a few. And um, then for each of those candidate rows, we check like the best scaling factor and uh, store it if a positive amount of non-zeros is canceled. And finally, we reset the counters and um, proceed with the next equation. So, um, Yeah, so this, um, the specify opportunities are then returned to the core. And um, in this case, the core will check again if the specification is still possible. Because um, like if some rows were slightly altered, it might still be possible to um, yeah, specify the row. Anyways, to come to an end for this talk, there are like many more pre soft reductions that are already implemented in Papillo, um, many of which are described in the paper by Tobias Achterberg and Dieter Weniger, and I think two more people or something like that. I don't know exactly. Anyways, um, yes, thank you for listening and. Um, Maybe there are questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Leona. Thank you for this uh, detailed and interesting talk. Um, maybe the, the, the last uh, reference on the slide was a bit confusing. So this is not a paper on Papillo, but just a general overview of uh, pre-solving techniques, I think, that have been yes, implemented exactly. in Gurobi, right? Uh, yes, exactly. So this is a very nice overview in the sense that it covers many uh, pre-solving um, rules so it's kind of um, and their impact in MIL mm -hmm. and those are most of the ones that are implemented in um, Papilo. Mm -hmm. Yeah thank you very much. So again please post your questions into the chat. I want to uh, start with a question from uh, Timo Berthold. He says that uh, the argument that a matrix-based view provides additional insights over a pure constraint-wise view applies not only to pre-solving 
but for instance also to cutting, especially lifting, and uh, to heuristics. Are there any similar plans for other solver parts? Mm. Not really fleshed out plans. So yeah, we might extend Papillo by some functionality that is not strictly limited to pre-solving in the future, but uh, there are not uh, some um, yeah, fleshed out plans. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we have this in mind. Hmm? Yeah, it would certainly be possible to integrate that. Then yes. I was going to skip. Maybe just one comment that I also want to make. It, uh, so uh, it was a conscious de decision to uh, not implement these algorithms directly in Skip, but to create a separate software library, right? Uh, yes, exactly. So uh, one reason is that we have the um, specialized data structures, uh, but also that we can basically, instead of like the SOPLEX pre-solving, for example, is um, lacking some things that we already have in Skip and uh, that we don't need to like have this double implementation effort for everything that applies to MIL and LPs um, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yes, maybe, maybe I also want to add that I think uh, having this as a separate standalone library uh, really can serve uh, the uh, where the MIP community for um, uh, creating meaningful computation experiments because often um, when uh, solvers are compared they are compared with different pre-solving routines and uh, so it is difficult to actually then judge um, uh, the actual effect of um, well of the algorithms that are often behind the pre-solving phase, right? And uh, so what people sometimes do currently is that they also use a, a specific solver for writing out a pre-solved problem and then compare on that problem without pre-solving. But of course, uh, that has the issue that the pre-solving in solvers is always very tuned to what the solvers do afterwards. And mm -hmm. so having also, especially a, a source open uh, academic uh, version here, I think will be really helpful for academic research here. Mm, yes. So now we have another question uh, by uh, Philip Christoffel. How do you deal with implications and updates to the implication graph in parallel probing? Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, I don't um, because uh, the skip probing is still running and um, the first important thing was to um, get the um, basic probing implementation up and running. But um, in principle, the probing data as it is organized um, with the thread local data can also contain, um, so it currently already stores reductions and it can in principle just also store the implications and they can subsequently be merged um, when the other data is merged in the parallel probing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And then there's maybe a last question by Minari Sharma. Is there a two-level parallelism? How is each pre-solver running on one thread? Or how each pre-solver running on one thread does data level parallelism within? So, um, yes, maybe so a bit cryptic, but you get the message. I understand the question. Um, yes, there is a recursive parallelism and this is supported very well by the Intel TVB library because it facilitates, so I don't say I want to run this pre-solver on a thread. Instead, uh, with Intel TVB, I basically specify that I can, that here is an opportunity for parallelization and I can run those tasks in parallel. And here's another opportunity. This can then be done recursively for this data parallel task and so on. And uh, Actually, there is no guarantee that TPP will run things in parallel, but it will decide based on runtime heuristics when, uh, whether threads are available and whether data parallel tasks should be split up or whether they should just be processed on a calling thread. Mm -hmm. And maybe one thing to add to this is that uh, despite all this, say, uh, like uh, dynamic load balancing and uh, that's going on in TVB. Of course, the results of Papillo are 100% deterministic. Yes, so we took great care for this, that we deterministically order all the um, 
things that could be non-deterministically ordered due to parallelism. And um, this also does not impose a significant overhead because of the way the parallelism is organized in Papelo. Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, let's thank Leona again for this talk.